Welcome back to Running Shoes Guru. My name is Brandon and today I'm reviewing the Saucony Endorphin Elite. Saucony now has a premium super shoe and it joins the likes of the Alpha Fly Next Percent the Puma Fast R Nitro and the Adidas Prime X. These premium super shoes have radical designs, they've got premium foams or technologies and they come with a heavy price tag. Earlier this year I reviewed this shoe, the Endorphin Pro 3 and while I thought it was a big upgrade over its predecessor, I felt like it wasn't S tier, it needed some tweaking to be S tier. I wasn't a fan of its really narrow, snug toe box and I just wished it was a little bit more propulsive and it had a more aggressive toe spring. Now Saucony has a brand new flagship marathon racer and it sits above the Endorphin Pro 3. It uses the new Power Run HG foam, it's got a really stripped down upper and it's got a new midsole geometry. It weighs 7.2 ounces for a men's US 9 and that's about 204 grams and that's the exact same weight as the Endorphin Pro 3. It has an 8 millimeter drop with 40 millimeters in the heel and 32 millimeters in the forefoot and the US price hasn't been revealed yet but my pair cost 430 Singapore dollars which converts to roughly 317 US dollars. I only received this shoe the day before the Singapore Marathon and my first run was some short strides. I wore thin socks on that run and heel lockdown felt terrible. The heel felt loose no matter how tight I tied the laces. It did feel really fast though with the most noticeable thing being the really aggressive toe spring which felt like it was tipping me forward. During the race I had no issues with foot lockdown and it felt much better with thick socks. It rained lightly for the first two hours of the race and I found outsole grip to be decent but not spectacular. I still found wet painted lines to be a bit slippery. I was pleasantly surprised by how stable it felt for a 40 millimeter stack height shoe and my foot strikes felt planted the entire time. The ride felt surprisingly firmer and less bouncy than the Endorphin Pro 3 and what I enjoyed most was the aggressive toe spring which made it feel really propulsive. The Endorphin Elite feels faster than the Endorphin Pro 3 and the main reason for this is the toe spring and how aggressively it curves upwards. So this makes transitions from midfoot to forefoot faster and it makes it easier to increase my cadence in the Endorphin Elite. Power Run HG is a very different foam to Power Run PB and it doesn't consist of tiny pellets that have been fused together. Power Run HG still feels like PB foam but it's got a firmer ride than Power Run PB and I prefer Power Run PB because it feels more energetic and more bouncy. Saucony will probably try to put Power Run HG in future versions of the Endorphin Pro but I hope they don't, I hope they stick to Power Run PB. In terms of cushioning softness, the Endorphin Elite is firmer than most super shoes. It's firmer than the New Balance SC Elite V3, the Metaspeed Sky Plus, the Primex Strung and the Adios Pro 3. And it's slightly softer than the Alpha Fly Next Percent 2. The midsole consists of two sections, this uncolored cream part at the bottom and this green foam above it. And it's really deceptive because it looks like a really tall midsole but your foot doesn't sit on top of it, your foot sits inside this green section. And the midsole side walls are raised so it provides guide rails to improve stability. Transitions in the Endorphin Elite are really smooth even though it has this midfoot cutout which makes it look like a clog. And that's because the medial side is filled in so you don't get a sinking in feeling as you transition through the midfoot. I find the Endorphin Elite really pleasant at a variety of paces and that's because of how wide and stable its base is. 
So mid packers as well as elites and sub elites can use the shoe comfortably because you don't need a perfect foot strike. It's firm enough for 5K and 10K races and it's also cushioned enough for marathon distances. So I find this shoe to be really versatile. The outsole of the Endorphin Elite looks like a mashup of the ASICS Metaspeed series and the Adidas Adios Pro series. And the rubber is really thin and it has a texture similar to the Adios Pro rubber. There's no rubber coverage on the medial side of the rear foot, so both of my shoes have been grated down by the road. You can tell that Saucony designed the shoe for midfoot and forefoot strikers. Power Run HG isn't very abrasion resistant, so I don't think I'm going to be able to get a lot of miles out of the Endorphin Elite because of the lack of rubber and because of how thin this rubber is. So this is a shoe that's designed for only racing. There's a lot going on with the upper of the Endorphin Elite and it was designed to be lightweight. It's got a knitted material in the rear foot and mesh in the midfoot and the forefoot. I found breathability to be excellent because of all the holes in the tongue, the midfoot cutouts and also in the mesh. And the flat tongue is gusseted so there isn't excessive tongue slide. There's no heel counter but there is this horizontal strap which is designed to secure your heel. It works fine for me with thick socks but I'm sure there are plenty of runners with low volume feet who will experience heel slippage no matter how tight they tie the laces. The forefoot and the toe box are accommodating and the fit is true to size unlike the Endorphin Pro 3 which I recommend going up a half size. The fit though of the Endorphin Elite is still on the narrow side so I don't recommend it for wide footed runners. If price and durability weren't issues, I'd pick the Endorphin Elite over the Endorphin Pro 3 because it's more stable and it feels faster because of its really aggressive toe spring. But if you don't have a super shoe, I'd recommend the Endorphin Pro 3 over the Elite because it's more durable and it's better value for money. Its upper also has much better foot lockdown. The Endorphin Elite's biggest weakness is its low durability. And if you're a heel striker, the shoe just won't last because of its lack of outsole rubber. So you can't use it for any training runs and it's just not value for money. I would definitely race in the Endorphin Elite again. It offers one of the highest levels of speed assistance I've felt in a racing shoe. And it also helps me with stability towards the end of a marathon when my form gets sloppy. There's a reason why Saucony elite athletes like Parker Stinson are racing and training in the Endorphin Elite now over the Endorphin Pro 3. The Endorphin Elite is the real deal and Saucony finally has an S tier racer. If you're a fan of the Endorphin Pro 3 and you're looking forward to getting your hands on the Endorphin Elite, let us know down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and please remember to like the video and subscribe to Running Shoes Guru.